Welcome to this edition of Man Cave Mayhem, where the project that I've been working on is a motorcycle lift. I looked at the price of them at uh, decent ones at about $1,500. You can get them a bit cheaper, but they're a bit nastier. You get what you pay for. But I reckon I could make one. Uh, so I've made this one specifically to um, the sizings that, are, uh, that I want. And as you can see there, uh, towards the back, uh, I've actually utilized not a hydraulic system, but an electric winch, small ATV winch, uh, two and a half thousand pound winch that I've got lying around the workshop. And uh, a little battery, uh, and it works extremely well. Basis of the frame is box steel, square box steel with a three mil wall, just for uh, strength. It's got uh, casters around underneath each foot. I'll just show you there, there's a caster underneath. You can just about see it. Uh, so it's, and there's a caster on each corner. So therefore it's uh, highly maneuverable. Uh, it can be moved with uh, a bike on or off it, of course. But then to provide stability, it's also got some decent sized bolts. So these simply just screw out to maneuver it and then they simply screw down, which obviously lifts the thing up off the floor and then provides complete stability of the, of the, uh, of the lift. So there's the winch system. I've actually doubled this winch up. So uh, it obviously comes from the winch itself up to the first block. Uh, it goes round the second block and then back to the winch itself. So effectively I've doubled the power of it, but a two and a half thousand pound winch would pick this up easily anyway. I just did that to gear it down so it doesn't bring it up too quickly or drop it down too quickly. Decent sized cabling and I've run it through a, an isolator, just purely for safety reasons, so I can isolate the thing, um, uh, or you know, take, it, uh, take the cat completely so that nobody could use it if, uh, if there's any kids around or whatever, which is quite useful. Same on this side, caster on each corner, and the fairly big bolts with the little rubber feet on the bottom of them to stabilize it utilized a separate uh, framework to, uh, to winch from, and obviously strengthened it with uh, these supports that go down to the base. Safety mechanism is a piece of pretty thick uh, 10 mil uh, steel bar, flat bar that goes into a uh, ridge at the bottom I might at some stage put another couple of ridges in there and then I can uh, support it at various different heights for, uh, for working on. It's also got uh, a stop so it doesn't come out, so it doesn't come up too far. So at this position, these are, these are vertical. So the winch isn't having to hold any weight because all the weight of, the, uh, of it is on these uprights here. A uh, piece of rubber in there to uh, to just to soften the blow and also takes up any slack so when the thing's in the upright position it's completely stable there's no wobbling of it at all i decided on the top at the moment anyway to go with a piece of plywood uh, purely because the plywood was cheaper than going steel probably a bit lighter as well does have some drawbacks, of course, that uh, if, if the plywood separates, there could be a problem, but it's, uh, it's only bolted on, or screwed on, so it's easy enough to replace, maybe with some uh, uh, aluminium checker plate, which would be expensive. But I've protected the sides with these, uh, this uh, plastic angle iron, well, not angle iron, uh, angled plastic, uh, just to protect the, uh, the sides of the, the plywood. I haven't treated this at the moment, I'm just investigating uh, potentially what to treat it with. I'm told that um, if I treat it with certain wood oils, it might dissolve the glue in the plywood and make it separate. So at the moment, I've just left it as it is. 
I could of course paint it, but if you paint it, then that paint only scratches off when you put bikes or bits and bobs on and off. This is also going to be used as a bench, a removable, sorry, a movable bench. So therefore uh, any paint that's on there would scratch off and that might be a problem. The top end, of course, we need some kind of a stop so that the bike front wheel doesn't go over the edge. So I've just used some three more plates, um, uh, cut down the back, uh, cut the whole thing cut to size, then uh, got an angle, angle grinder with a cutting blade on it, uh, cut halfway through the, the, uh, the, the three mil and then bent them into shape. Uh, made, measured the angles of each of them so that they're uh, they're they're equal and then welded down the back welded all the way down the back on both sides and then welded that to uh to another piece of the bar which is you can see underneath which is uh just an l-shaped piece that's uh, bolted in place to hold it and then it's got some supports here and the other side which are also welded in place to provide extra rigidity, so that, that isn't gonna go anywhere. Got a system, uh, just a rubber, uh, a rubber tie down, and what that does is that's now under tension when it's in the upright position. So as soon as I go to lower it down, it needs some kind of a, a recoil to pull it down, and that's exactly what that does. Simple, basic, but it works. And being rubber, it should last quite a while. I was gonna use just a normal elastic bungee, but they stretch. Utilized some uh, bits of chain, chain link, and just cut the chain links in half and then welded them in place. So we've got some tie down straps, one in each corner, same on the other side. And then these two for the uh, for the rubber strap and there's one down there on the base plate down there too. This end needed a bit of a ramp system so simply just use some three mil plate just hinged in place and supported underneath with a piece of uh, box steel just to stop it from flexing when the bike rides up it and then on the bottom here Just got uh, two wheel bearings that I put onto a piece of tube and held in place with a with a link pin, split pin, sorry, uh, and just welded in place so that when the ramp lowers down, this kicks into place so it's just at the right angle, so it sticks out just beyond the edge of the, the ramp, and then these just guide it down. So that just hangs nicely in place. Does take up a little bit of room, as opposed to the hydraulic type that lower up and down in the same plane. Uh, this one is a cantilever system, but uh, I've got the room here, so uh, this one works for me. So if we make sure that that is on, we'll just bring it back a little bit. just to release the, to try and use all hands here, and just release the locking bar. Apologize about the poor photography. And then simply, you see the, uh, the recoil brings it down. the ramp just comes out so it's simply a case of just riding the bike or pushing the bike up the ramp onto the bed locking it in place just used uh, the cable that was on the winch to start with uh, these uh, these are rated at uh, these um, pulleys are rated at 250 kilograms so they're big enough and then up is exactly the reversal. Let's 
sure the bar is about to lock into place. The bar locks into place and I just like to release it back a little bit just to take the strain off the cable so it's not, uh, not stretched. And then we simply turn it off and we're good to go. Thanks for watching and join us again on Man Cave Mayhem.